I'm running for sheriff because I felt years ago that my calling was law enforcement. I served for many years with the Shreveport Police Department, nine years, almost nine years as the Shreveport Police Chief. Uh, the logical thing from there was to run for sheriff, and I have now, and, and this will be my sixth term. Uh, I feel like God's called me to be the sheriff. I feel like I'm not a politician. I'm a pretty straight shooter. But the main thing is I tell the truth. Uh, I'm, I'm very passionate about law enforcement, about protecting people. That's been my life ever since college and will continue to be. And uh, just think I'm the right fit, and, and I should be sheriff. Sure. Well, I'll, I'm assuming that by that you mean law enforcement. We'll keep the discussion to law enforcement and not water and sewer, things like that. As far as law enforcement is concerned, I've always been a proponent that duplication of services costs taxpayers money. That's why I was, uh, as chief of police, I uh, attempted to set up task forces whereby the Shreveport Police and the Kettle Parish Sheriffs would do the same function, one task force. Um, and I was successful with financial crimes once I got to be the sheriff. I was also successful with uh, the Kettle Shreveport Narcotics uh, Task Force. Uh, it makes a lot of sense to combine forces. All it takes is for the sheriff to swear in the city police that are involved with the task force and they become, uh, they have the authority to work throughout the parish just like the sheriffs already do. Uh, you don't have to buy such as in the case of narcotics. You don't need this huge pool of buy money for both agencies. You don't need a, a, a sophisticated surveillance van for both agencies. You don't need ninety to $200,000 night vision gear for, uh, for the city and for the parish. You, you combine them together, you save taxpayers' money. Uh, so I've done a lot uh, in that direction. As far as combining patrol, uh, the Shreveport Police Department, one patrol shift of theirs is the same size uh, as, as our entire f patrol force. In other words, we have 91 deputies that are assigned to do nothing but patrol. That's about the size of one Shreveport police shift. And so the people have the, have the mistaken identity that we can come in and take over Shreveport. We do come in and assist, we come in and patrol, we come in and do different task forces. We're on federal task forces. Uh, the many things that we do do, but the complete combining of it has not been done and I'm not sure that's the best for all concerned. Well, it's hard to say what the single most, uh, the, the biggest problem that we have is. Uh, they all kind of just run together. One of the biggest problems that we're experiencing right now uh, within all law enforcement throughout the United States is shortage of deputies, shortage of officers. We currently are 57 uh, positions short within the Caddo Parish Sheriff's Office. Baton Rouge Police Department is 100 officers short. Uh, Shreveport is short. Everyone is short. Less and less people want to come into law enforcement because of uh, uh, not only the pay, but the perception, the danger, uh, and the fact that uh, it's one of those few professions now where if you get in, if, for instance, if you make a mistake, you very well could be prosecuted and probably will depending on the political climate. You look at the referees at the New Orleans game that blew that call to where it prevented them from being in the Super Bowl. And the commissioner said, oh, they're just human, they made a mistake. But if you work for $35,000 a year, and you just make a mistake, you're going to get fired, very well get prosecuted, depending on the political climate, and all you did was make a terrible mistake that you hate, that you got to live with the rest of your life. So who really wants to get into an environment like that, a job like that? And so it's difficult to get people. So to answer your question, our, one of our biggest things is getting people to field. Uh, it's hard to field a team. It's hard to get people to come to work for us. Uh, other areas, uh, we're, more and more technology is needed, more and more scrutiny is on, on police departments, on sheriff's office. And so it's, it's, it's harder to do your job because you have more, more hurdles to have to jump to get something done. But all that having been said, uh, I'm proud of what we've been able to do. Uh, Shreveport is, uh, Kettle Parish is 900 square miles.
Uh, the city of Shreveport is 100 square miles. In the 800 square miles that the Caddo Parish Sheriff's Office is responsible for, the crime is down 54% in 18 years that I've been sheriff. That's a tremendous amount, 54%, and it's been a consistent uh, decline. It hadn't been just up and down and up and down, and, oh, this is election year, we're lucky it's down. Uh -uh, not that, it's been down. Uh, other jurisdictions up, down, up, down, but we, uh, the, the men and women of the Cattle Parish Sheriff's Office do an excellent job out there. Well, it's been a, it's a, been a major driver for us uh, ever since probably, uh, well, I don't know when drugs became the, the impetus for crime, but uh, before, I guess it was alcohol in the days of Matt Dillon, you know, everybody get drunk at the saloon and go out and start shooting. Uh, but, but then drugs came on the scene. Remember, crack cocaine was a tremendous thing in the early 70s, uh, and that caused law enforcement to have to adjust. And then uh, now the codeine and, and uh, the opioids, uh, that's a, that was a tremendous thing. But in, in um, we didn't ha we although we have a lot of opioid misuse here we didn't have the uh the deaths from opioids that even baton rouge had our biggest problem around here seems to be cocaine and methamphetamine we uh because of the fact that we're so close to arkansas clo so close to uh, texas and right in a rural area uh, we have a lot of methamphetamine, uh, little small labs, uh, and now now meth labs are not even the thing because meth is so uh, prevalent. You can get it from uh, the same trails as heroin and, and some of the things like that come in. So we have more of a problem for of, of uh, methamphetamines and cocaine in our particular area than we do the opioids, although opioids are a problem. Okay, there were 10 bills that were passed. Uh, some of them, I think, were good bills. Some of them were necessary bills. But my whole, to, to start out, the, whole, the problem with justice reinvestment was that it dealt at the end of, at the far end, after the case has been through trial, after somebody's in jail, that sort of thing. Our problem with the justice system in Louisiana and elsewhere is the front end. It's what they're charged with when they initially come, what they're allowed to plea bargain to, what charges are dropped, how much is used against them, what they've done in the past, all of those things. That's our problem and that's what I have a complaint about. Also in the justice reinvestment, those 10 acts, five, about five of those acts dealt with things like uh, um, uh, uh, possession of a weapon by a felon. We all know a felon carrying a gun is a felon is somebody that's done something serious. It's been proven they did something serious and you tell them they can't have a gun. They get out of jail, they go and get a gun. Well, that's the kind of people that shoot my deputies, shoot me and you, hurt your kids, carry guns to places and, and that they shouldn't have them and they've been told they shouldn't have a gun. Well, the state of Louisiana had a 10-year mandatory just like the federal government. 10-year mandatory if you're a felon in possession of a firearm. Justice reinvestment changed that to five years, okay? Justice reinvestment changed the fact that if somebody breaks in on you in the middle of the night with a gun and ties you and your family up, it's called home invasion with a firearm. If they break in with that, it used to be 10 years mandatory, underlined mandatory sentence, okay? Justice reinvestment changed that to one year, not mandatory. It took illegal use of a firearm off of the dangerous crimes and the uh, violent crimes list. It did a number of things. Uh, home invasion with a vulnerable victim, such as your grandmother on a walker or a child. Okay, that, that, uh, that's taken off, of, uh, that's, that's been reduced now to one year. And when you say in Louisiana, when you say a felon with a firearm has to serve five years mandatory sentence, that doesn't mean five years mandatory sentence. Immediately, they only have to serve 
of five years, even though it's mandatory, and then they get a year off if they'll take certain programs. So 35% minus a year, so you're not spending but just a couple of years in jail what you, and so truth and sentencing is another thing. I could talk for hours about what's lacking and what justice reinvestment did not address uh, and, and people did not get that message out. There were some good things, but there were some sorry things that made Louisiana uh, less safe. Okay, well, we already are heavily involved with our SRO program in our schools, uh, even in the city, with the DARE programs in the schools, even in the city. We do Safety Town. We have over 200 different programs that do, we do with young people. Uh, some of them I'm most proud of are, are the ones where there's guns involved, where if there's a gun in their home, they're taught about the safety of it. Uh, and then if they're old enough to be hunting or doing something like that, then they have safety programs. We have the Boy Scout camp. We do a tremendous amount in the schools already. Uh, that being said, uh, law enforcement is a strange bird in the fact that, that violence prevention uh, child, children, education, uh, those type things, uh, prisoner rehabilitation, all of these things don't really fit. I'm the chief law enforcement officer of the parish, okay? We don't really, that's not our primary mission. Those are very necessary missions when you talk about educating children, rehabilitating prisoners, very necessary. But you don't, the fire department, for instance, if they carry people to the hospital, but nobody goes and requires the fire department to say, what are you going to do to prevent that injury from happening again? If their house burns down, they don't call the fire department chief and say, hey, chief, what are you going to do about all these houses that are burning down? If there's a flu epidemic, they don't call the head of Willis Knighton or the head of um, of LSU, or, and they don't say, what are y'all going to do to keep these people from getting the flu? But you let people get shot on the weekend, you let your house get burglarized, they call in me and ask me, and yet I have one of the smallest budgets that there are. I don't have the budgets of some of these other agencies and some of these private entities. So uh, yes, we do all we can do with what we have. Uh, but, but our money is very, very thin, and I am the chief law enforcement officer of the parish, the tax collector, and the keeper of the jail. And those three things right there use all of our funds, and uh, especially the jail. And that's a, uh, that's, a huge, that's a huge drain in our law enforcement budget. Okay, the Cattle Parish Sheriff's Office doesn't get the 19, we get uh, 13, 13.41 now. When I took over as sheriff, the millage rate for the Sheriff's Office was 14.52, I believe, if I'm mistaken. Because I've chosen not to roll forward, our millage rate that you pay now, just like our crime rate in Cattle Parish, our millage rate is reduced uh, because of the Sheriff's Office. I'm very proud of that. Uh, I don't know how much longer we can continue not to roll forward, not to, because we have more and more demands on us through terrorism, through active shooters, through mass shootings, through uh, Homeland Security, through the technology that's required now and the body cameras and the other things that everyone says that you have to have, and yet we're operating off, off of dollars from, from years ago because I've cared about the taxpayers. Uh, tough on crime, careful with your money. That's not just a saying. That's the philosophy that everyone that's going to work for the sheriff's office has. And I'm very proud of that. So at some point, and I can't tell you whether I would ever ask for another tax or not. I hadn't. And, and we've dealt with what we have and we've reduced the millages. But, uh, but I don't know how much more we can do. And, and, and that's why I'm so careful with any kind of uh, any kind of exclusions or exemptions that we do within the sheriff's office uh, as far as like ITEP and things people think I'm a uh, they think that I'm you know I don't, I don't love Shreveport I don't love Cattle Parish because you won't we don't get but nine percent of the property taxes that a person pays anyway or less 
and uh, and I have to be very very careful if I'm going to continue to let to reduce people's taxes reduce their millage rate then I got to be very very careful with what I do with that money it's it's a uh, it's very difficult ITEP is something that has been very misunderstood by many, many, many people. Of course, the Chamber and the Committee of the 100 are not those that misunderstand it. They're the ones that understand it. But for clarification, ITEP is, meant, is an economic development tool, the way that I understand it, to have business be more business friendly. It's, uh, it's, it's something that's very difficult to explain, but you would never ask the Army the United States Army or the military budget to reduce their budget so that the United States Forestry Department could plant more trees. Everybody would be outraged. Public safety, the less than or nine percent of the money that we receive and we work to keep that down, that's it's very very important with all the added things, the mass shooters and the, uh, uh, the, the other, the violent crime. So I have to be careful, and I don't think the citizens of Caddo Parish are wanting to say and telling me, okay, you exempt those taxes, you know, we don't want you to collect taxes because it's more important that we get a business here than it is that you continue to, to protect our loved ones and us and our property. That having been said, we deal in law enforcement, we deal with two things. We deal with facts and we deal with accountability when someone violates the law. That's the two things. What was missing previously, before the, the years that you stated, was one thing, facts. We never had, nobody ever told us how much benefit we were getting. It was always a case of just exempt these taxes, you'll get more businesses and you'll everybody be happy. There were never any facts. There was also never any accountability there was never any, if the jobs don't come, if the houses don't come, what happens? There was never accountability. So that's contrary to the way I've always, uh, my profession and the way I've always lived my life. Now, between the two acts you're talking about, the changes, we now have supposedly some accountability from the state if you don't reach your ITEP goal. We hadn't seen that take place yet, but we're assured that that's going to be the case. And the second thing is we now, through the Northwest Louisiana Economic Development Partnership, Scott Martinez, I, I probably said that wrong, we now have a formula page to where we can see the actual facts. So we have facts and accountability. That's why that the uh, denied or I said no to a couple of the first ones because the facts weren't there. I wasn't comfortable, there was no accountability. This last one, I let pass through and we exempted our taxes on the very last one that we did a few months ago because the facts are there, it was gonna help us in our area, and the accountability. So yes, if, if they're both there, I'm all for it, but you're gonna have to sell me on it because it's what we do is very, very important. We give a, a tremendous amount of training to churches and to any business groups or any neighborhood association what to do in the case of such as if you're at the mall or the airport and you hear shooting, uh, how to respond to that. It's a, it's a shame we live in those the, that area. Homeland Security is something that, that we, it, it's kind of the natural fit with the Sheriff's Office because we already did that type of training. Uh, before we took over the Homeland Security title, before I got that, uh, we were already the first in the state to do uh, active shooter drills at schools. We got statewide attention there. We were the first and developed the statewide accepted policy and program for, uh, for church safety that was adopted by the Attorney General's office. So we did, we were already way ahead of the curve. Homeland Security is, is people think that that's dealing with dirty bombs and all of that if you watch TV and sure enough it is on television. Uh, but our role, my role, 
because it's the parish government that has the responsibility to establish in each parish a homeland security director. Most parishes, it's somebody that works for the Cattle Parish Commission, the Bossier Police Jury. Uh, in our case, they, the Cattle Parish Commission appointed me as the Homeland Security Director. I wanted that position because I, we were the ones that respond to major emergencies anyway. And so it costs, it costs the Cattle Parish Sheriff's Office about $250,000 to $300,000 a year in order to be the Homeland Security Director and Department. But if we didn't do it, it'd still be taxpayers' money. It would be the Cattle Parish Commission that had to pay that. So we, as, as a natural fit, accepted what they asked me to do. So I, because I'm sheriff, I'm not Homeland Security Director. Because they asked me, I am. Such as Bossier Parish, the sheriff is not the Homeland Security Director uh, for the parish in Bossier. Over here it is. So we are more emergency response, emergency preparedness, than we are for um, dirty bombs and, and TV shows. Ooh, it's, it's such an interesting and such a diverse, uh, I mean, we, you know, employee retention is very difficult for us. Uh, diversity within our workforce is, is, is something I'm very, very proud of. Uh, it's, it's about, we have about 50% minority, 50% majority, which makes it really just even. You know, they're not a minority majority because, and, and that's not an intention. It's not a count this, this, this. It just works out that way. I'm very proud of that. I'm proud of the way that, that we do so many things down there. But I'm mostly proud of the folks that work for me. I don't like election time because it's a time you have to talk about yourself or take credit for what a lot of other people do. And I don't, I don't do it all. I don't do half of it. I don't, I, all I do is kind of steer the ship. I pick a point on the horizon where I want to take the team to, and it's their job to get us to that horizon and that point. And that's my job, but they actually do the work, so I, I, I don't like taking credit for them, but there's so many things I could talk about in law enforcement and, and the job and the passion that I have for it and integrity and honesty. Uh, I, I just I cannot imagine the citizens of Cato Parish uh, finding someone that would do a better job and be more committed than Steve Prater.